Welcome back to the PK Show. I'm Logan. I'm Mike. And we have a lot to discuss today, so we're just going to hop right into it. Okay. Before we even get into hockey... <laughs> Logan, you decided to wear a green shirt today? Oh my god, you're right! I just, I just realized that. I should probably take it off. So you're going to see it right through his chest. <laughs> I, just I thought, didn't even for, I forgot about it. I thought that. that was hilarious. I thought I'd just bring that up just so it's in your mind the entire show. So We're going to tie this so we can't see it. I think that's hilarious though. Okay, so the first thing I want to talk about is... Um, wow. <laughs> William Carlson. He has 39 goals. Uh, he's going to score 40. He's still got a couple more games to go. I just think it's amazing. Just the Vegas Knights, Golden Knights, the whole shebang that they got going here is they got a, they found a guy that... What? You saw that? Yeah, the little flash. <laughs> William Carlson. I have his stats right here on this very, very tiny... Yeah, why'd you... Uh, why'd you let's make, know, this let's make it a lot bigger. Yeah. Uh, Right now, he has 39 goals, right, in 72 games. His total goals last year in 81 games was six. That is a in nine, significant improvement. In nine before that. Uh, six and a half times as much. Yes. Look at that math. That is and then he had 25, goal, or 25 points and 20 points the two previous seasons. He's got 65 already. Wow. And the crazy thing is, uh, the Blue Jackets traded this player to Vegas to make sure that they got him. To make that doesn't make any sense. What it was the expansion draft. They wanted Vegas to make sure that they uh, selected Will, William Carlson over any of the other possible players that they had. So you're saying the Blue Jackets wanted that? Yes. Okay. Blue Jack. Right, let me look it up. William. I don't remember the trade offhand, but I know it was like David Clarkson, a first. David Clarkson to the Vegas, uh, actually. In exchange for selecting forward William Carlson, the Blue Jackets have traded their 2017 first round pick, a second round pick in 2019, and David Clarkson. They had they got a 40 goal scorer, a first, and a second, just handed to them. <laughs> and David Clarkson, but we're, don't worry about that. They have three assets, and one guy is a first line center. <laughs> That's phenomenal, all right? For the Vegas Golden Knights. Yes. Not as much so for the Columbus Blue Jackets. No, they're fine, though. They have Panarin. <laughs> I know you So uh, I, went, I went to the... Love that. I went to the Blackhawks game again. Yesterday. Like, yeah. Which was the... Against the Avalanche. The 20th. Yes. No, yes, yes. And I think the last episode we recorded... It was right after we went to the other Avalanche game against the Hawks. Yes. So, uh, they didn't do very well. They lost they, they terribly. Lost five I did not watch any of it because it was bad. It was. They like, started out. They got. Off, they got the first goal of the game. So, Brent Seabrook on the power play. Yes. Let's talk about that for but a second. But the entire time I was there, I was I was looking at Brandon Saad, and then in in the second intermission, I got a notification on my phone. Or Tammy Panarin has a hat trick. <laughs> I was so sad. They didn't. They chose not to because usually they so like highlights from other games that are going around in the league. Yeah. Not Columbus. <laughs> they uh, accidentally on purpose left him out of the the highlight lineup. Uh, yes. For they they had every team they had the Toronto highlights they had. Well, you get the point. But they had every highlight but the Blue Jackets game. I miss him. Yeah, me too. I mean, I wasn't a fan of that trade from the beginning with, but that is a whole nother uh, topic. So, sure. all right, what else do you want to talk about? Let's move on. Let's um, first and foremost, there was a source from the Blackhawks, according to uh, Dan McNeil's of six seventy, the score, and his Blackhawks had. Source said that Joel Quinville himself thinks that he will be fired after this season. What do you think about that? Okay. Here's how I see it, all right? You have... 
one of two moves, I think, or neither, but I'm expecting one of two moves to happen this offseason. Either Joel gets fired mm-hmm. or Stan gets fired. Mm-hmm. I don't see a scenario where they both go, and I don't right. see a scenario where they both stay. Well, I'm, I could see them staying more likely than uh, both of them getting out at the same time, but here's how you look at it. Joel is working what Stan is giving him, right? Yes. So yes. if Stan's not giving him the right players, you're not going to see production on the ice. Right. But then the other thing is, oh, maybe that the veterans, because they're not producing, maybe they're just not listening to Q's message anymore after the like 10 years that he's been here. So I think Q has definitely proven himself mm-hmm. over the time that he's been here. But in contrast to that, I also think that Stan Bowman has proved himself as well with some, uh, how you say, risky, not risky. Um, bad contracts? No, not bad. Like... Got players like some gems, like Artemi Panarin, for example, mm-hmm. who he who he signed, which wasn't all him, but no. he has done some things that at first we were all like, well, "What are you? Why are you doing that?" But he has come through in the end. But I don't think this is one of those cases. I'm sorry to say that, no. but I just don't. It's just like it's a combination of all the moves he's made over a course of time, and now they're finally funneling into all right. It's like all the stuff that you were handing out just. You can't do it anymore. You no, really it's, it's can't. It's coming back to bite us. Uh, I don't know. I, I honestly don't know what's going to happen. We'll just have to wait and see. What do you, you think is going to happen? I mean, we still... We just fired Mike Kitchen last yep. year. Yep. And he was in charge of the special teams. Yep. They haven't improved at all. Zero percent improvement. Um, Alf Samuelson was the guy that he took over for. He right. was in charge of penalty kill. The penalty kill is... It's average. It's I think it's 14th in the league not after probably last night <laughs> uh, after giving up two power play goals but it's it's better than it was last year mm-hmm. power play wise though it, they have gone it's, down drastically it, yes it's brutal um, you know I think I think Hugh personally I'd like to see Q stay and Stan go yeah that would be I what I think Q has earned maybe an extra year now if they go they don't go to the playoffs next year and they have the talent there then, you, then it's time to look, think about... Yeah. But, I mean, you're telling me that this team right now is a playoff contender. No, no, and I I don't think it's his fault that his guys aren't producing and doing what he's saying. Exactly, yeah. And for him to go and say that he thinks he will be fired, I don't know how I feel about that either. I think he's just not confident because this is the first time they missed the playoffs since he's been here, so... Uh, but that again, that's something else. The, mm-hmm. That's the first time they've missed the playoffs since he's been here. Mm-hmm. So what and does that it, say it, about it, him? I don't know. I, I don't know. It's uh, well, if he if he did get fired though, they saw that there would be another team that would fire their coach just to pick up Joel. Oh yeah, and then for you, sure. And then you would see them go to the playoffs, of course, just because. That's how. That's how it we work. operate that's how it here work. in Chicago. So uh, no, we can't even we can't even say that, dude. We are so spoiled. <laughs> uh, yeah. Because you know we're gonna win the draft lottery this year. There's no if and or but. We're gonna win it. <laughs> that's just how the NHL works. Yes. So, I think that well, I think the NHL knows what big of a market they have in Chicago now. Like ten years ago, there wasn't this market here, right? Well, I, let's go. Let's go fifteen years before Rocky Words took over okay, his dad. Right. One of the worst franchises in all of sports. <laughs> yes. It was ranked. Um, get a new owner. It's not really new, but somebody else. Newer. New. Fresh face. Yeah. Um, you turn pro uh, franchise around. Good TV deals. You got new coaches, great players, good young talent, and you see where they are now. And now it's later. one of the it's biggest crazy markets. Th- it's crazy. It's been a big market. It's Chicago, so I mean, um, crazy to think it's been ten years since those guys have been drafted. <laughs> yeah. Yes, that so. is crazy to think about. So uh, let's uh, transition. Let's move on to uh, next up on the list. Uh, you have goaltending on here. You said you wanted to talk about goaltending. So. Oh yeah, uh, go, uh, Corey Crawford is fourth or third in the league in save percentage still. Okay. Is that all you have to say? <laughs> well, I okay. saw that because Curtis McElhinney is number one right now. Uh, Corey Crawford's still there. Okay, but Five. how many games have he's has he played? Twenty-seven. Twenty-eight. Twenty-eight. Okay. Actually. League wide save percentage is actually nine oh five. So for Anton Forsberg is actually league average, right? Which is scary as heck to know. 
Because <laughs> he does not seem like a league average goalie. No, he seems like a in the toilet kind of a goalie. Mm-hmm. I th- but I do think the NHL got what they w- not necess- not just talking about this, but overall they got what they wanted with more scoring. Okay, good good topic. All right, <laughs> how? Because I have my opinion on how they increase goal scoring, but how do you think they should attack increasing goal scoring? I, how do I think they should attack? Well, they have. I mean, they can make the pads smaller. I was, say, I was looking at Patrick Wall right here. Do you yeah. see the size of those goalie pads? Yes, they are minuscule they're, at best. They're very small. I mean, it's not, you're not taking away safety, but you just make them smaller. At, maybe a more tapered fit. At what point does it become uh, a hindrance for goal scoring as opposed to protection? Like it's protection to a certain point, but when it's you know this much extra. Mm-hmm. It's that's not protection. Well, anymore. I remember them talking about that a couple you know, like last season or two seasons ago, where they showed a, um, I guess like a concept of what the pads would look like. They like they lower the shoulders. The glove is a little bit smaller. Same thing with the blocker. Pads are narrower. It's not hurting the goaltender. It's just making more room for open net. So we'll flash up right here, like a comparison side by side of yeah. Pads. I think I think there's actually like a video that shows it like decreasing everywhere and contouring to the body. Yeah. We'll try and get that mm-hmm. going, but that's, and I don't think, I've talked, I have a lot of goalie friends, and they are, every single one of them is opposed weird. to that. They're weird, yeah. Oh. oh. All right, so we're back. <laughs> uh, we apologize um, for the cut. Technical The, the light over here has been going out <laughs> due to a faulty extension cord, so if there's another jump cut, uh, just suddenly... That's because my that extension be cords are you'll, you'll, from five below and they cost exactly Yeah, you'll probably hours. see us go, oh, crap. <laughs> and then the video will stop and then we'll pick it back up. But anyway... Yeah, we were talking about goaltending. I think we're kind of end, uh, ending the topic there. We wish that... I think smaller goaltender pads t- contouring to the body yes. would uh, increase goal scoring because there would be more room for the open net. Go back to how it was before, in the time of Patrick Waugh over there. No on helmets the wall. or anything. Oh, yeah, there we go. We'll just <laughs> throw it all the way back. Uh, you want to move to something a little more uh, positive, I guess you could say? <laughs> yes. Alex DeBrincat got his third, third hat trick of the season in his rookie year. That's insanity. Yes. Going into it, I didn't think he would... No. I didn't think he would score uh, maybe 20 goals, maybe 15 probably, more likely. But I did not expect him to be this good of a goal scorer at such a young age. And he's getting more confident. I mean, I'm going to the games. He's really controlling the puck well. He's seeing the ice very well. He is – okay. He is the closest thing to Panarin that we can have. Stop doing this, dude. And him and Patrick Kane, I think, are very similar. Yeah. Yes, okay. That's really all well, I have to say about but that. But he's not as similar as Panarin. Okay. You could think about it. You could have had P- T- Brin Cat with Taves. You could have had Panarin with Kane. We would have been all set. Hunky dory. Yeah. Uh, fun- but compared. Uh, sorry, didn't mean to cut you off. No. But compared to Patrick Kane, Alex Debrin Cat, he. Okay, Patrick Kane took 623 regular season games to get a hat trick. Took him an overtime game to in or a playoff game to it, finally get his first. That was in two thousand nine when yes, he did that. But the Vancouver Canucks. That was his first regular season one didn't come till much later than that. Mm-hmm. But it did not take Alex to bring it that long. No, it did not. No, <laughs> uh, he's actually in very. Uh, I don't know how you, how you describe it, but he's in uh, good company with this dad, uh, courtesy of Mark Lazarus, uh, his Twitter account. Mark, Alex DeBrincat has, or he now has three. At the time, he only had two. But with his third hat trick of the year, he is in. Uh, oh my gosh! Sorry. <laughs> He's with some pristine uh, company. Uh, also, with three hat tricks in his rookie year, uh, would be Tony Granato, Eric Lindros, Ooh. and Patrick Laine. Okay, those yes. all those have guys have had three. Hat tricks in the rookie year and add to Brinkett to that. Uh, the season's not over. Uh, there are two other guys ahead of him, one being Joe Neuendijk. He had four, and Timu Solani had five yes. in his rookie year. Oh my gosh. Can you <laughs> Can you even just fathom what that 
is like for no. a second there. No, but I mean, he just shows that uh, he's a very good scorer, and this doesn't happen. It's very rare. I'm not going to say he's going to have a Patrick Line season like this next year. <laughs> Right. Uh, but still, it's good to see a guy on a struggling team right now having a good season. Yeah. I mean, that's really good for him, and I'm really glad for him. Um, I don't know if he – I heard at the beginning of the season uh, he had still not finished high school. That just says how young he is. Uh, he's my age. He's your age. Yeah. That's insane. Yeah. That is just – And you're like a foot taller than him. I know, and he's like – yeah, but he's, he's insanely good at hockey. Mm-hmm. Just – Overall. All right. Moving on. Your next topic of conversation. The Rockford Ice Piggies signed a guy. They did. Who they signed? Kyle Maximovich. Mac- Maximovich. Maximovich. Yeah, 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 that's a good job. All right. Okay. He leads the OHL, Offensive Hockey League, Erie Otters in scoring this year. And last year he helped them to a uh, team championship. Team championship. Actually. Alex Dubrincat led them to that championship. And he played, and fun fact, he's followed by Connor McDavid on Instagram. So you're saying the Hawks are getting McDavid? Clearly, that's what I'm saying. Okay. <laughs> Tapes for McDavid, confirmed. <laughs> confirmed. Okay. Confirmed. Uh, I really don't know anything about uh, Kyle Maximovich. Neither do I. I just uh, I just saw that was... Rockford signing. I mean, they also signed uh, Darren Radish. He's also a defenseman from uh, uh, Erie. So and they have a it seems like a strong connection uh, to players yeah, coming from there. Couldn't get McDavid though. Uh, no, uh, another guy we talked about in the last episode, Victor Edsel. Edsel uh, announced today that he is coming to play for Rockford for the remainder of the season. Ooh, yeah. So that should be good to see. That what, should be very good. Yeah, see what he has to uh, offer to the team and see what he looks like on American Ice, North American Ice. <laughs> and then at the time this video is going up, we also have uh, teams. Clinched in the playoffs. I think there might be. There's probably more. There's, but I know the Hawks are mathematically eliminated after yesterday, because they weren't eliminated already. But they are now mathematically eliminated, which means it's okay for all the writers and authors and whoever to uh, start making some articles about what's going to happen in the off season and what's wrong with them now. Yes, I mean, uh, I just I don't even know what what's going to happen next I don't know year. Either. It's all speculation at this point. No, but... it's always speculation until actually it happens. All right, so you got anything else to talk about? Um, well. Because I got the website ready. <laughs> <laughs> Let's see. Oh, big news. Whoa, big whoa, news. whoa. Just ripped all headphone users. <laughs> Hawks, as a result of their four-game losing streak, have been jumped by the Edmonton Oilers. So the Hawks now sit one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Worst in the league. They're last in the central in the uh, what, central conference or in the central division. Yes, I don't know central conference. But the uh, the closest team to them was Edmonton, and now that they jumped them on their one game winning streak, along with uh, the Islanders, the Hawks are now in seventh, which means they have a forty five no seven point six percent chance of getting Rasmus Dahlin. And on that note, let me just it is just Nashville and Tampa Bay that have clinched. By the way. Is I don't it? know who's counting, but... Ooh, uh, you all heard that. <laughs> all right. And with the first overall pick in the 2018 NHL draft, it belongs to... Ooh. The Edmonton Oilers. That's not good. Oh, crap. With the second <laughs> overall pick in the 2018 NHL draft, it belongs to... The Dallas Stars. Oh. All right, all right. Okay. And with the third overall pick in the 2018 NHL draft, it belongs to the Montreal Canadiens. Nah, the Hawks aren't even in there. Maybe next episode. Maybe next episode. <laughs> so, on that note. who, Where were the Hawks sitting? They would be drafting ninth because of the teams behind them jumped, I believe. That's how it works. No, Montreal's ahead of them. So two teams jump them, so that means they go down two spots from seven to ninth. Whoa. I still... Okay, I don't even know exactly how the whole draft lottery works. So the first lottery is to find out if you're going to be in the top three, and then there's another lottery after that of just those three teams to see who goes one, two, three. I did not know that. Yeah. Okay, then. So... 
a Fox jump in the top three, that's awesome. But if not, so well. What are you gonna do? Nothing. Sit there and complain like we'll I always cry. do. Yep. That they're right. terrible. But I think that's a good place to end for today. Absolutely, it always is. So with that note. Smash that like button! Oh, man. I think we got to do... If you like the content, hit a like. Uh, helps us out. Makes us want to do more videos instead of just <laughs> Those sitting here and talking. four views we got last week. You know? Yeah, I know. They're all from me, probably. <laughs> uh, subscribe if you like the content. Put on notifications. Uh, if you want to see more, get notified when we put up a video. Uh, yeah. That's it. We'll see you next time. See you next time. Peace out.